Every act of writing is a lightning strike, whose thunder might rumble on for a thousand years. Welcome to the Crypto Naturalist. Hello friends, being a crypto naturalist or a naturalist or just a wide awake human being involves two kinds of curiosity. The first kind is the active, get up and go sort that propels us to hunt for answers, to seek out mysteries and follow their winding threads all the way to understanding to walk with purpose toward new places and new ideas. I suspect that's the sort of curiosity most of us think about when we consider the concept. The second, sometimes overlooked kind of curiosity, has less to do with seeking and more to do with noticing. Why, I'd wager that wherever you are in the world, there are a dozen or so worthwhile mysteries within your easy reach. Heck, do you know what that chair you're sitting on is made of? Do you know the names of all the trees you can see from that window over there? Do you know if they're native to your area, or if their species were brought from distant shores? When and why? What's the sky above you doing right now, and what's it mean for the coming weather? The point is... Sometimes curiosity is about striking up a conversation with distant lands and abstract concepts, and others it's about taking the time to speak with your immediate surroundings, learning the language of your time and place right here and now. Whenever I take an interest in the small details, I usually find that I'm rewarded for the effort. There is real beauty in the seemingly simple and mundane. On a related note, today we're taking a look at semi-corporeal subterranean birds of prey. I mean, it can't always be about chairs and local weather, now can it? Now, you and I both know that there are plenty of fascinating subterranean raptors to choose from, so I'm sure you're wondering which one I've chosen to focus on today. Well, wonder no longer. Today we're discussing the giant, shadow-devouring underhawk, a bird whose semi-real talons dip into the sunlight world to pluck shadows from unsuspecting prey. Chances are, a bit of your shadow has been taken by an underhawk at some point or other. I doubt you would have even noticed. Plus, it grows back in time. No harm done. Of course, some crypto-naturalists theorize that losing part or all of your shadow can trim a few hours off your life. But, so can a night out at a bar or an order of mozzarella sticks. So I don't think it's worth too much consideration. Of course, all that applies to us creatures of flesh and blood. For creatures that are entirely made of shadow, the stakes are obviously a little higher. I'm thinking particularly of shadow birds. You know how on sunny days you sometimes see a bird silhouette racing across the ground? Well, sometimes it's a bird shadow, and sometimes it's a two-dimensional shadow bird. Underhawks are no trivial matter to them. But I digress. I spent the last 40 days in a large cavern, underneath a lovely field of winter wheat not far from Lexington, Kentucky. The field was always teeming with wildlife and their shadows. A murder of crows in a lone oak. A dozen or so white-tailed deer taking a break from the deeper woods to soak up the noonday sun. The field mice that run in staccato bursts and the birds and snakes that chase them. I was beneath them all, in a natural stone chamber, outfitted with my own special blend of UV lamps and a webwork of LED twinkle lights. 
all designed to make underhawks more visible to the unaided eye. I swear, sometimes I get the sense that there is magic under every rock and log, if you just know how to look for it. Speaking of seeking out magic, how about a little poetry? It's time for today's Hidden Lore segment. Today's Hidden Lore is a poem by Ellie Reeve. I wonder if the river, like me, considers her transience. If she ever loses her way or her willingness as she runs away from the mountain, becomes a bog and buries and bears, bathes me in forgiveness. I wonder, when I see her swirl seemingly stuck between stones, if she will work it out this time, or if she is simply dancing. A lovely poem about nature and meaning and the way such concepts intersect with ourselves. Ellie is an aspiring artist and writer from Norway, nesting in the jungles of Hawaii. Find her on Instagram at ellie.reeve, that's E-L-I dot R-E-E-V-E. On my 40th afternoon underground, I was nearly ready to give up the project. There I was, staring out into the twinkling violet glow that made the cavern seem like a strange undersea grotto listening to the creak and whine of the lawn chair upon which I sat, a chair whose origins remain a mystery to me. When I heard a loud whooshing whoomp whoomp sound like a giant heartbeat deep in the earth, I saw the hawk as it dove through my cave toward the surface. For the briefest instant, it was framed against the stone, a huge hawk, Upside down, from my perspective, diving upward. A breath later and it returned, and I saw the stark outline of a deer shadow clutched in its talons of living darkness. A few flaps of those billboard-sized wings and it was off, flying back down into the earth through the solid rock under my boots. I very much doubt the encounter lasted ten whole seconds, but I believe it'll stick with me the rest of my life. Honestly, I think my fascination with underhawks comes in part from the exercise of trying to see the world through their perspective. Just close your eyes with me and try to imagine it. You live within the earth. You perch on veins of magma, branches of liquid rock that stretch out from the burning core of the world like an omnidirectional tree. You live in this massive bubble, and the surface of the world, your sky in every direction, is like a rippling sea. You see shadows move in these deep waters, and you dive to pluck them from the frozen waves. Sunlight is alien to you. Gravity can't seem to find purchase on your dark feathers. Solid stone is but mist and spring breeze as you fly through the globe unhindered. Even if my understanding of this perspective is incomplete at best, what a gift imagination is to grant me even this narrow glimpse into another creature's life. Use this gift of your imagination and see how you grow in empathy and understanding. See how such imaginings bring new appreciation for your own unique perspective. Until next time, we're all strange animals, so act like it. You can support the production of this show and find bonus content and exclusive episodes by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash crypto naturalist or by visiting the Merc and support sections on cryptonaturalist.com for t-shirts, stickers, and more. 
You'll find information about submitting your poetry or prose for our Hidden Lore segments in the About sections of our website. The Crypto Naturalist is written and read by Jared K. Anderson. Stay curious, stay wild, stay weird. <laughs>